on YouTube, you're back with the stage. We're gonna continue our Let's Play of Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. Now, last time we left off, we went to look for Joshua, who went to look for the silver-haired man who seemingly helped the orphans. But now, we're just looking for him, so I don't know where I'm going. Ooh, a chest. EP charge, that's very useful. That's why I like exploring, people. Uh, but yeah, so now we're just looking for Joshua in this creepy old school building. But for now, it doesn't seem that bad. Like, I'm just checking out the first floor. And it seems that there's nothing of value here, so let's keep looking. Found him. Strange. I could have sworn. But it couldn't be. Joshua! Hey, you two. You need to stop making us worry about you. We almost had a heart attack when I heard you went chasing after some guy with silver hair. Um, how did you know? Polly told us. I guess, she saw, I guess she saw you. Ah, she's a pretty sharp-eyed kid. I did follow a man matching the description out this way, but I guess I lost him. Oh my. But he must have been pretty talented if he managed to give you the slip. Any idea who he was? I'm afraid not. I don't think it was our arsonist, though. I tailed him as long as I could. I see. By the way, why'd you run off by yourself? My thoughts, exactly. You could have at least left us a message. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to worry you. Wh who said I was worried? I was just pointing out the importance of teamwork. Huh, you're a terrible liar. Not five minutes ago, you were in a total panic. I was not. And hey, you were pretty concerned yourself. I, um... Haha, <laughs> thank you, both of you. Your attention, please. The play personnel, please report to the auditorium right away. Once again, all play personnel, please report to the auditorium right away. Thank you. Oh yeah, it's almost time, isn't it? Yes, we should get into a costume and the play will start soon. Alright then, let's do this. Oh, what about the guy with silver hair? Hmm, I suppose that all we could do is let Karna know and warn her and keep an eye out. No, I wasn't done exploring! The three then spoke to Karna about the silver-haired man and left for the auditorium immediately afterward. Thirty minutes later. All those familiar faces. Wow, look at all the people. Okay, now I'm getting kind of nervous. You'll be fine, Estelle. This is what all the rehearsals were for. Besides, once we start up, you'll forget they're even there. You're the type who can only focus on one thing at a time, anyway. Just one thing at a time, huh? Well, I guess I'll focus on the boy in the dress, then. That'll be easy. Uh, okay, okay, you can even have a little, your little spat another time. Ahem, <clears throat> this year's campus festival is already a big success. Though we have many esteemed individuals here, such as the Duke and the Mayor, we can't afford to be intimidated. Just remember our number one rule, and you'll be fine. If you're gonna puke, do it offstage. We've done a good job of keeping the festival lively so far. Now let's close it out with a real bang! What is that noise? What was that noise? Oh, I guess that was the PA. Without further ado, the Student Council proudly presents Madrigal of the White Magnolia. Enjoy the show. In, in the year 1100 of the Septian calendar, 100 years ago, Liberal was still a land of nobles and aristocrats. But commoners too held some power, and they are prestigious traders that grew with more influential with each passing year. I read that wrong, I'm so sorry. During this period, there was much friction between the classes, and the nobles and commoners clashed often. As the time went on, these clashes intensified. The intercession of the royal family and the church failed to end their squabbling. The stage was set for the final conflict. A year had passed since illness stole the king from his people. Our tale begins in an early spring evening in the rooftop garden of Grand Cell Castle. The street lights shine on everyone, each bright with their own happiness. I'm trying to play Joshua if he was trying to put on a girl voice, though I'm pretty sure he's saying his normal voice. And in spite of that, Ah, here you are, princess. Please, don't think you'll you, don't you think you should be going to bed soon, your royal highness? Staying up so late can surely do you no good. It's all right. If I should fall ill, if that happened, then perhaps I could avoid being the last emperor in this dying flame we call liberal. Please do not speak of such things, your highness. You are the most exalted individual in liberal. If you were to talk, take a husband, you could take control of the <coughs> kingdom. I forgot to get myself water. I'll be right back. <coughs> Sorry about that, ladies and gents. <coughs> I need to get water. I was. 
My throat felt raw. <sighs> if you were to take a husband, you could take control of the kingdom. I will not marry. Despite my father's wishes, I shall not consent to it. But why, your highness? You have two fine men as suitors, after all. One is Sir Julius of the chivalric order of the Imperial Guards, and the eldest son of a duke. And Sir Oscar, commoner though he may be, he has been recognized often in his battles against the Empire. Ah, both such fine men! <laughs> no one knows better than I the quality of their characters. Oh, Oscar, Julius, how am I to choose between you? Oh my, isn't that Joshua playing the role of the princess? <laughs> I suppose that Jill has put a great deal of fun to the, this reverse casting business. Indeed, ma'am. He plays his role well, but the two maids leave much to be desired. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember, Oscar, how we spent our boyhood days in this alley running about pretending our sticks were swords? Like how, how, how I could never forget Julius. In those days, it was all so simple with you and Cecilia alike. I treasure that time greatly. <laughs> I recall how stunned I was. I would always conspire to play with her in secret, only to discover you had been doing the same. She was as lovely as a sight of the pe falling petals in spring. Indeed, fair Cecilia was like unto our very own sun. But her light would dim with each day that passed, and the nobles and commoners, the fury of the conflict that could never have been avoided. The princess's grief is easily understandable. Cruel fate mocks us so, for it is our very existence that has brought her such sorrow. Oh wow, they're so cool. I hate to say it, but the guy kind of looks cuter than the girls. <laughs> Hush now, and watch the show. Uh. Excuse me. No, this, Julius. The commoner's impudence can no longer be tolerated. If they should forget their place and no longer view us as their superiors, liberals' power structure would surely fall to ruin. It is as you say, father. But it has been only ten years and ten days since the Eastern Republic was founded. Already the commoners grow in power and influence there, do they not? Speak of such a not repul speak not of such repulsive events. What is freedom? What is equality? What is anything if commoners and nobles alike should cast aside all tradition? Better we should fall on our knees before the Empire's military and concede to their will. Father Now that's a damn fine duke up there. We'll let those commoners get the all high and mighty and your whole society collapses. Your Excellency, perhaps it would be best to keep our voices down. I would just sock him. You show some promise, Oscar. With your connection to the royal family, we could learn a great deal about the nobles. That would give us a great advantage, and we could seize the initiative. But Chairman, I cannot consent to this. I could never use Cecilia for political gain. Sorry, let me just clear my nose for a bit. Haha, <laughs> always putting others before yourself, I see. Even though the chance now presents itself to make men and kings equal. It would be if you refuse. It would only lead to a bloody uprising and subsequent revolution. The royal family and surely the nobles as well would disappear into the shadows of history. Chairman. Hmm, impressive. Was Mayor Dalbor here? I didn't see him. Oh, he was talking with the headmaster. I don't talk to him. They've really done their research. I had severe doubts about this ever since I first heard about the whole reverse role gimmick. <laughs> the students have put all put a great deal of work into this. It seems. The young braces have had no small hand at this either. I forgot about his voice. I do not wish bloodshed on anyone, revolution or not. I cannot simply allow Julius and Cecilia to die. As for myself, I know not what I should do. Ugh. It's no good, I'm gonna be sick. Are you alright? You must have had quite a bit of more than you can handle. It may be spring, but you'll surely catch your death if you sleep out here. Uh, thank you, good sir knight. It has nothing to do with being a knight, but rather simple concern. I would be, have to be quite the young fool not to see what I must do. You got that right. What? <gasps> Stabbed! Ah, uh, my arm! <laughs> just a touch of anesthetic on the blade. Now if you'd be so kind as to sit still. Curse you, assassin! Who sent you? Just a noble who wants you out of the picture. He wanted it badly to pay me up front, and pretty well at that. All you need to do is die. Ah, I get it. Not bad. Not bad at all. So up so up next we should have... Whoops, almost got so wrapped up I forgot about my work.
long has it been since you have entered my sight, fair princess? Yes, Julius, it truly has. I cannot help but notice that Oscar is not with you today. But back when my father yet breathed, the both of you off spoke of by the maidens of court. As well you, as well you know, your highness, the kingdom is in the midst of a dire crisis. I'm so reading his lines wrong. And as such, he and I may never be as close as we once were. I confess I came to you today and asked a favor. What favor would that be? That you would allow he and I, head of the chivalric order and of the high guard and the young general, to engage in a duel of your honor. And the victor shall be granted the head of the great honor of becoming your husband. <gasps> Excuse me. <laughs> Quite traumatic indeed. Caught up in the conflict, uh, bleh, caught up in the conflict between noble and commoner, these two close friends have finally decided on a duel. The princess now realizes their determination and keeps silent. And on the day of the duel, the thing happens. <laughs> they do the thing for the girl's hand in marriage. <laughs> The two knights step into the grand arena of the royal city. Many have come to witness it, commoner, noble, and all social caste in between. But conspicuously absent from the proceedings is the one over whom they fight, Princess Cecilia herself. Let me just say this. Uh, no girl is worth killing your friend over. My friend, I fear that this was inevitable. Perhaps fate always intended for us to meet in so base a fashion. Speak that we may be both that we both that we may both be unburdened, if nothing else, for our beloved princess. We would cleave a path through fate with our own hands, but at this moment my words and her smile seem lost. Has fear clutched your heart, clutched your heart, Oscar? Perhaps, but what is this passion that pierces me to the quick? As I see with the blade drawn, I feel as though I've been waiting for this moment. Before the storm, by the name of revolution, should claim us both. We shall let fate decide our outcome. Yes, and may the goddess above see our spirits as they truly are. Come then, let it be done. On guard. The animation's so simple, but it's still pretty good for PSP. Impressive, Julius. I just said the same of you. But still, you seem to hesitate. What troubles you, Oscar? Is this the extent of your skill? Perhaps the tales of your acts of valor against the Empire were grossly overstated. Ha! Well done, Julius. Magnificent swordsmanship. Ah. Oscar, your arm! I've had worse. Tis but a scratch. Neither of our blades connected with flesh, not even a glancing blow. Your wound was struck prior. This is a tactic most Lou do Gradment. Was this your attention from the start? Ha ha, I thank you to cease slandering my good name. Are you playing that I instigated this? Father, is it true? Did you? It's alright, Julius. My own experience has brought this about. Besides, I've received far worse in the field of battle. I'll put everything I have behind my next strike. I intend. I intend to kill you, Oscar. Very well, I will wager it on my next strike as well. For the fair princess and the future of the very kingdom, he who lives and when all is said and done will inherit the responsibility for all, and he who dies will watch over it all from the realm of spirits, such as the pride of a knight. <laughs> I suppose it is. Ha ha! No! Oh, Cecilia, what? Princess! Cecilia, why? We're not in attendance. <laughs> Why weren't you here? Oh, Oscar, Julius. I do not wish to observe a duel between the two of you. I felt I had to find a way to put a stop to this fighting. Praise I to that I arrived in time. Cecilia, Princess, hear me in all, all in attendance. Dismiss me and set aside your differences, please. Are we not all of liberal? And do we not love this land? There is so little that separates us from one another. If you would but take your foe's hand... Surely we can find a peaceful resolution. Your Royal Highness! You need not say more. My vision fades. But what of you two? 
may not do as I ask. Your will be done, my princess. At your side. Strange. Everything is floating. When I was young, I would sneak out the castle, down to the alleyway. Oscar, Julius, you both always had smiles for me. I love your smiles. So please, don't ever stop. Princess? No! This cannot be! Princess! I'll do anything! Please, no! Cecilia, you. Our poor princess. I, I just don't understand why she would do such a thing. A princess gave her life, though we might stop this unending dispute. Compared to that sacrifice, what a trifle is the pride of a nobleman. Had we not been fighting, it would never have come to this. Only now, when it is too late, do I see our folly. Is this the fate of all men with their spirits still shackled to their flesh? Aegeos, great goddess of the skies, we now know of your great resentment. There is much you do not yet understand, it seems. I granted your flesh to be your vessel, but your spirit still no more freedom and nobility. Such contempt for it lies only within you, yourselves. So beautiful. A be more beautiful voice I've never heard. It's amazing. Adios herself is graceless with her presence. The goddess. Incredible. Hear me, young knights. I have observed your contest. You are both courageous and strong, yet something vital within you is broken. It is as you say. Our own immaturity is what invented this fate upon us. Chairman, has your hate for the nobles and the monarchy blinded you to the fact that we are all, not, we are all but men? I am ashamed. Duke, you know your sins better than anyone else could. And you, all the rest of you who have simply watched these events unfold, there is something fundamental within you that is lost as well. Strike your hand upon your breast and think well upon this. Ha <laughs> ha. And it now seems that you have remembered your hearts. As such, perhaps hope yet remains for Liberal. So long as you never forget the lessons learned this day. Oh, she has vanished. Mm. She lives! <laughs> oh, where am I? P Princess! Cecilia! Oh my, Julius, Oscar. Have you both been called up to heaven as well? It's a genuine miracle. Princess! Oh, praise Ideos. Why are the two of you here? And the Duke? And the Chairman? Did you all kill yourselves for me? Why? I wanted peace! <laughs> Imagine, that'd be hilarious. So then, I'm not dead. Well, my dear Ideos. Ideos has given Liberal back its beloved. Praise her for her benevolence! Oscar, Julius, what happened? Nothing that you need to concern yourself over, Cecilia. The conflict doesn't end. I believe that everything will be alright. You're being naive, Oscar. We still have a duel to finish, do we not? Julius? No, you still intend to fight? On the contrary, this match is concluded. And besides, this fool managed to get hit on his sword arm. However, this does leave us without a clear victor. Once he's recovered, we can begin once more on even footing. Wait, Julius. Don't misunderstand me, Oscar. I'm not giving up on the princess. Once you are healed, our duel will continue, but with blades of wood. Just as when we were, just as when we were boys. I see. <laughs> Very well then, I accept your challenge. Have neither of you any regard for my own wishes? You are mistaken. My lady shall be judged today's match. I think it'll only be fair for the victor to be granted a kiss. Surely everyone waits with bated breath for it. Very well. Kisses! Eek! Don't they look marvelous together? Almighty Ideos, look well upon this! And may this fine day extend unto, extend unto eternity. Eternal peace to Liberal! Eternal glory to Liberal! <laughs> Glorious! Beautiful play! Beautiful stage with sir! Excellent! Excellent! <laughs> the silver-haired man! Haha! <laughs> Quite the grand finale, but no matter. Who are you? I don't remember who you are at all. And so the curtain fell on the magic call of the White Magnolia to the Grand Fair fellow and the acclaim. And with its conclusion, an announcement went out that the campus festival had reached its end. The crowd began to disperse and leave the campus, each person wearing a look of contentment. 
Ha, huh, brilliant, just brilliant! That was one fine play, if the director's allowed to say so. At first, I thought people would make fun of us with the role switch like that. I'm so glad they took it seriously. Agreed, the costumes worked out pretty well. I wouldn't want to have to wear the mine again, though. Of course, that's are like some form of torture. They are! Uh. <laughs> no kidding. Well, it was all for a good cause. I just wait till you see how many pictures the photography club took. One of you, the ones of you ought to be pretty pop particularly popular. <sighs> Give it a rest. The ones of Estelle and Chloe won't exactly drive people away either. The guys always go nuts for the junior girls. We're really good at raking the mirror. I mean, uh, all proceeds will go to a good cause. Chill. Hmm? Estelle, what's wrong? Ah, uh, uh, what, where? What are you talking about? Nothing important, really. You've been spacing out ever since the play finished. Are you okay? Well, the fight scene was pretty hard work. It's no surprise that you're tired. You feel sick? We can take you to the nervous office. I'm fine, really. I deal with the fatigue every day as a bracer. I'm just trying to get my head back in order is all. Oh? I still you don't mean. No, nothing like that at all! Ah, I promise, I'm perfectly alright! <laughs> Stop hammering it in! Stop it! <laughs> I trust we're not interrupting. The babies! Miss Chloe Oscar was so cool. I want to be that cool when I grow up. <laughs> Thank you. You really were great, Miss Estelle. Uh, Sir Julius. Hey now, Mary. And Joshua was so cute. Yeah, I couldn't stop looking. Um, <laughs> thank you. It was great fun for us all. A play about love and friendship buffeted by the winds of a tumultuous era. It was so moving. The fight scene was intense, and though I could only expect it to end in tragedy, it, such a, it had such a hard woman conclusion. I thought it was splendid. Well, with praise like that, I had to say it was worth the effort. Oh yeah, and Hans? Oh right, I almost forgot. Huh, what's up? It's nothing bad, don't worry. I'll be right back, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, okay? Those were Jill and Hans, no? Chloe, a friend of the student council then? Yes, they were in charge of the production of the play. I see, I must thank them as then. I'll just have many fond memories of Ruan. Matron. I've made up my mind, I'll tell them my decision when we return to Minoria. Then tomorrow, we'll take the first steps. Whoa, so soon? Hey, what you talking about? Clem, you shouldn't listen to the uh, in on grown-ups talking. It's okay, Mary, but I think we should probably return to the inn. We can have dinner and continue our discussion over there. Okay. Now then, Chloe, and you too, Estelle. And Joshua, I'm afraid we'll be taking our leave. Thank you for today. It was a lovely play. Oh, hold on a sec. Jill's coming back any moment. She'll probably want to say goodbye before you go. Pardon me. Pardon me. Oh, Dean Collins. It's a pleasure to see you again, Machin Teresa. I must apologize for not coming by earlier. To thank you for your time, and to, to thank you for taking the time to visit. You needn't thank me. The festival was magnificent. I'm grateful for the invitation. Yes, those students were magnificent, weren't they? Chloe told me of your current situation. Truly dreadful. I was trying to think of a way we could help. I, Jill. Yes, sir. Please take this. Jill handed Matron Teresa a bulky envelope sealed with the Royal Academy's crest. What's this? We took up a collection for you. It's 100,000 Mira. Please use it to help rebuild the orphanage. 100,000 Mira? That's impressive. But how? Well, we have the Duke as well as the Mayor of Bose, so there are some celebrities here. Thanks to them, we were able to collect far more than we would have otherwise. Dean. No, I couldn't. I can't accept this. I don't see why not. The festival collects donations for charity every year. People donate specifically to help rebuild the orphanage. But I... It's too much. Please accept it, matron. But, Chloe, I realize that you're overwhelmed. But think about it. With that much mirror, the rebuilding could start and you wouldn't need to go to Grand Cell. You wouldn't have to give up your herb garden. She speaks the truth. Joseph would want you to accept this. For the children. You didn't focus on the moment, just what can be done with it. You're right. I, I don't know how to show my appreciation. Thank you. Thank you all so very much. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, that should settle that. Hey, what's this going about going to Grand Cell? Did something happen? It's okay, there's no need to worry. You've all been through so much. It's really not that big a deal, but why are you crying, Matron? Don't be silly, Clem. Those are happy tears. Oh, it's so sweet. 
I forgot that happened. That's so sweet. <sighs> after the matron and the children left to return to Minoria, Estelle and Joshua joined the other students in cleaning up after the festival. By the time everything was done, they had given away, given way to the evening. But we had everything set up for you to be able to stay. I mean, the festival just ended and everything. <laughs> Sorry, but we can't. Since we're still apprentices, we can't go out too long without checking in at the guild. We'd like to give a report before the day's out, if we can, so they have to excuse us. Is that so? Oh, well, I guess I'm on my own tonight. I'm sure gonna be lonely in a bed without you. What? Hans, would you please give the tasteless jokes a rest? I still didn't listen to him. Oh, haha. <laughs> a joke. It's never boring with you guys. I'll give you that much. I hope you get the chance to come see us again. And stay for a couple days and nights. Eh, sure, we will, thank you. We'll stop in again soon. Haha, <laughs> well let's get going. We'll lose a data if we don't hurry. So I headed to Minoria, Chloe? Yes, there's a lot I want to talk to the matron about. She said it would be alright for me to stay over at the inn with her and the kids tonight. I hate it if you won't be here after the festival. Ah, well, what can you do? I hope you have a good time. And yeah, about the matron and the kids. Isn't it kind of risky for them to be carrying around that much money? Oh, don't worry about that. One of the other braids is escorting them the whole... The whole lot of them back to the village, and her name's Karna. Apparently, the deed made a special request. Never, he never misses a beat. Well, stay healthy, you guys. Here's hoping you guys do great with your brazier studies. Yep, you can count on it. Best of luck to both of you as well. Hmm. I've only had a few days at the academy, but it was great fun. Well, uh, other than class, anyway. Yeah, it might sound pretty unbracer like but even though we originally came out to assignment, this whole experience felt more like a vacation. You got that right. Man, the students do live it, the students sure do live it up. <laughs> hmm? What's wrong? Nothing. It's just I can't send seed nearby. I wonder where he went. Maybe just looking for dinner. Yes, that may be it. I'm sorry, I'm just being silly. Please allow me to come with you as far as the coastal road. Sure, it'll be fun! And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where I'm going to have to end this part for now. What a great ending. A play, a happy ending, with a little twinge of mystique, mis mystique with uh, the whole silver-haired guy. And the fact that, you know, I feel like there's something going to happen to those kids again. Please don't mug the children. Uh, they, they, need, they need an orphanage. Let them have it, please. But again, I don't remember what happens after this. Not specifically. But I do know that this is where things are going to start picking up. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from me or from the series, hit the subscribe button. And if you're not exiting the Shaders, my name's Shades. And I think we're getting close to the end of Chapter 2. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I could be wrong about that. For all I know, we're only halfway through Chapter 2. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, hopefully, we are getting along soon. There is still two chapters after this um, that uh, that I, we need to get through. And then after that, we can go to Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, second chapter, which I'm totally, like, amped up for. So uh, I guess I'll see you guys then. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from me or from this series, hit that subscribe button. And you're not exiting the Shadyverse. My name is Shades, and I hope you've enjoyed your day in the shade. See you guys next time. Bye.